As I look at all of you here, to me, it's a miracle. It, it's such a miracle to see people who I haven't seen in so long. And I just wanted to tell you guys how we met, because that itself is a miracle. So when I finished my PhD in 2013, I had this desire to meet a lot of women, go to clubs, you know, drink and drugs and all the rebellion stuff. And I know Shami Manti over there didn't like me for that. There she is, she's on her phone. But she's right, I know what you were saying to my mom. And so, you know, being a model kid and going to Jamaat Khanna every day and all that, I kind of took a back turn and started doing things that people were not, they didn't appreciate it. My mom and dad didn't appreciate what I was doing. But I was trying to find who I am. And out of all of that struggle, you know, reading all of these books about how to pick up women and, and how to find love and how to meet the, the dream girl and, and, and spend the rest of your life with her. When I, was, when I was in Vancouver, this was during COVID, okay? One of my friends, Haider in Pakistan, I called him up and I said, Haider, I'm in trouble here. I, I don't feel good. This is not my city. And he told me, Farhan, go to Tulum, Mexico. Go to Tulum, Mexico. And I'm like, why, why do I go to Tulum? What's the point? He's like, because Farhan, you've been telling me for years that you want to go here and you haven't gone yet. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to listen to Haider because Haider is the one guy. He wanted to be here from, from Pakistan. I, I told him, don't worry, he's about to have a kid. He told, he's the one who taught me about abundance, about holding in your heart that you have everything in the world already, rather than trying to grab stuff from the world. So Haider said, go to Tulum, and I booked my ticket that day. I broke my lease, and my landlord, who was this Persian guy, was like, just cursed me out every day for breaking that lease, but I went. As I was in the flight to Tulum, I spoke to, you know, the, the universe, God, Mola, and I had one wish. I told him, when I get to Tulum, help me find a girl that will carry me through life and be with me in my life story, be with me in my journey towards life. And on my second day in Tulum, I was at a co-working space, Digital Jungle, and I saw Martha, you know, she was wearing really cute shorts and stuff. And uh, I, I was there on my, on my chair, I was working, and I saw this girl get up with the legs. <laughs> and she, she started walking, right? And in that moment, I needed a miracle because we're nervous, right? You're nervous, you're in a new place, it's your, your first day in a city. I saw her walking and I said, there was some voice inside me, he's like, Farhan, go, go get her. I stood up, I started walking. She went outside, she sat on the chair, I sat on the chair right next to her, pretending to, you know, ignore her. And I'm like, yeah, it's all chill, I'm good. And then she said something. And then I said something back. And we started talking. It was a miracle. That thing was a miracle. But it didn't stop there. Our relationship took some, you know, little roller coaster. I messed up a few things. And she got really mad at me about that. And then at a certain point, because of my mistake, because of what I had learned from those books 10 years ago, about how we know how to talk to girls and how to, how to get her to chase you, you know, how to ignore her. I was doing all these games. And at a certain point, she had decided that she didn't want anything to do with me. She's like, you know what, Farhan is not for me. She told me this later. So we weren't talking to each other at all. She would literally come inside the co-working space and say hello to me, and I would ignore her. I would ignore her because of trying to be cool. And then we didn't talk to each other for a while. We basically stopped. 
and then the day of the miracle. This was around 6 p.m. in Tulum. I was riding my bike, and I see Marta at that very moment in that street riding her bike this way. And we hadn't talked to each other in weeks before that. We were done. And I talked to her, and you know, I'm, I'm like sort of goofy. So I go next to her in the bike, I'm like, you want to race? And then she's like, yeah. So we start racing, and then she comes to her destination, and she goes her way, and I go my way. And I'm thinking, I'm like, maybe I messed up. Like, why did we meet here? I don't really know. But I was too proud. I was too arrogant. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? Forget about it. Ah, coincidence, blah, blah, blah. So now I start riding my bike back and I get a text from her. And she says, hey, I, I owe you a dinner. Remember, I owe you a dinner. Drink, 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 drink. I didn't want to say drink, you know, because of... But... <laughs> Let me tell the story. So, so drink, because she, she did owe me a drink. And I said, you know what? Um, I sort of wanted to play a little bit, but I'm like, you know what? Let's do the drink. And then we met for a drink at La Pizzina, which is an Italian restaurant, and I still remember the moment I decided that this is my girl. Martha, your innocence and kindness and how transparent you are. When she feels something, she says it. No hiding. She just says it. This is how I... And I still remember at the restaurant, she was standing right next, just right in front, like where Dad is right now. I went close to her like nothing happened. And, and I, you know, I went for a kiss. And she backed up. And I felt really bad. Like I messed something up. She backed up. And then I'm like, I'm like, I know what's wrong. I ignored her. I messed up. And she's like, you can't just come and kiss me like that. What about what just happened? Right? And I, at that moment, while she was crying, and, and just so innocent and lovely and so kind, I decided that I'm going to take care of this girl. I'm going to take care of her. That night was a miracle. And all of you, and, and I was talking to Kareem earlier, you know, we were talking about stuff. Kareem, I'm telling you, dude, life is about miracles. This is a miracle to me. This was not supposed to happen. And the, but the reason it's a miracle is because I made a certain effort to do stuff, to be in certain places. I, I, made, I talked to the universe and said, you know what? Give me the girl who's going to carry me through life and be with me arm to arm. And through a miracle, this happened. Thank you all.